Some time ago I made a video where I demonstrated how I make a medicinal cocktail from mushrooms that I forage in the woods. One of the mushrooms that I mentioned in that video but didn't talk about was the red belted polypore. If you're interested in finding more about this valuable and easy to find mushroom, keep watching. All right, rather than just talk about where you can find these mushrooms and what they look like, why don't we go out to the woods and see if we can find a few out there. Okay, here is what I was looking for. You can see there's a stump right here, uh, maybe five feet tall, broken off of an old spruce tree. And growing right in here is a couple of year old red belted polypore. Interestingly, there's one on the ground uh, it's, I don't even know where that came off of. I'm looking for the bracket that it may have come off of. But uh, this one, yeah, can you see how it's wet underneath? It emits a kind of like a moisture from it. I'm going to harvest this and we'll take it back and we'll talk about its medicinal qualities. It's not an edible, but it is a good medicinal. So right at the base of a spruce tree I was just walking by, right down in the moss, is another red belted polypore. Small one, this one looks like about three, three and a half inches across. Great shape though. Other than a little dirty. That's another one to add to today's forage. So as you saw, the red belted polypore grows on the stump of dead conifer trees. And that's true of most of the species in terms of it'll grow on spruce. That's where I find them pr primarily on. But I have found them on pine. They'll grow on hemlock and they'll grow on balsam fir as well. They can be found in most of North America, at least the northern half of North America. And they're very common. They're probably one of the most common and yet overlooked mushrooms available in the woods. Now, they are one that does grow from year to year. Like a lot of the polypore mushrooms that grow on trees, they will grow and increase in size from year to year. And that's why you'll see this type of banding, this angular banding. When they are very young, they don't have a lot of color as they emerge from the tree. And they can be a little difficult to determine exactly what they are. In fact, in my mind, when I see the small ones, they quite often remind me of the reishi mushroom, another great medicinal mushroom as well. But as they grow, they grow with a white edge. Here's a good example, run, uh, one right here. It'll grow with a white edge for this year. And then at the end of that year, it'll turn red. Now, sometimes you can see the colors will vary on these. As they age, they can get quite dark brown to gray in the backish area. But the one thing that they'll all have in common is this red band around the outside. But even that red band will have some variance in color. As you can see, I've got one here that's a little bit on the orange side compared to this one, how red that one is. The underside of these mushrooms are, have a pore surface, a very, very fine pore surface. That's why they call it a polypore mushroom. It's made up of thousands or millions, I guess, of tiny pores, which release spore to move on to other trees, infect, infect those, and continue growing. When you find these quite often that are fresh in the woods, these will be very white. Occasionally they'll be slightly yellow. Now this one was very white when I first picked it, but as it dried it has yellowed some, but uh, it doesn't harm it at all, of course. Now, as you saw in the videos, the, one of the examples I had, when I reached underneath, you could feel it was almost like a dew, a, a moist, even sugary kind of a dew on the bottom of it. And that's also very common. If it doesn't have that, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the mushroom. It could just be the point in the growing season for it that it doesn't have that on the bottom of the mushroom. So what I wanted to do is just give you a couple of examples of what these look like when they're broken apart. I'm going to talk a little bit not only where you can find them and the medicinal uses for them, but how you can store them and then later use them in a cocktail. So one of the mushrooms that I found that you saw in that video, this one here, I decided to cut it apart 
to be able to show you what the inside looks like. And I'll tell you why that's important in a second. You'll see that right at the bottom layer here, there are pores that are vertical, or look like little tubelets that are vertical. And of course, those are the pore chambers, and that's where the pores, or the spores, sorry, spore chambers, that's where the spores are going to be released at a later date. You can see it has a quite a corky contact all around the top here, not unlike the horse hoof fungus which grows on dead birch trees and similar to the horse hoof fungus this can be used as a coal extender for bow drills it can be used for transporting fire now when they say that what they mean is you'll get this glowing as an ember and it will just continue to burn as a glowing ember that you can then use at a later date to blow a bird's nest into fire again uh, one of the things I'll tell you right now in terms of storing them is don't do what I've done with these ones here. Primarily for the most part, I, I kept these as an examples, but when you find these brand new, they're going to be quite hot, solid and quite heavy feeling in your hand because of the moistures in them. They're going to be rubbery. You can bend them, but not necessarily break them. They are fairly solid, but they're going to be soft enough that if you get them home while they're still in that state, you can cut them up and then dry them out. And that's what I would recommend. Not unlike what I did with the birch polypore mushrooms in another video, cut these up while they're still fresh, dry them out for later use. If you decide that you're going to leave them whole as I've done with these ones, you're going to have a challenge getting them to broken down. It literally took me an axe that I used, batoned through this one to get this one to break apart. I suppose I could have used a saw, but that would make a bit of a mess, of course. But once they're broken down, you can take them apart. You, they'll dry. They become very light and quirky, as I mentioned. And it's a lot easier to bring the medicinal qualities of the mushrooms out of these afterwards if they're already broken down. So before we move on, there's one more thing I want to mention about identifying the red belt of polypore, and that is there are no poisonous lookalikes. There are a couple of mushrooms that look similar or could be confused for the red belt of polypore. Probably the most one that most commonly gets confused is the reishi mushroom, especially when it's still quite young, because it has a nice red color added on it as well. But it is one of the more medicinal mushrooms, so that's not a concern. There are two other mushrooms that do have red around the outside edges, a little bit similar to this. They have different shapes, they grow in different areas, areas, they grow in different logs, so you're not likely to confuse it with this one if you stay with what you know about this one, and they're not poisonous. They may not have any known medicinal value, but the good news is they won't hurt you either. So the First Nations people are reported to have used the red belted polypore for a number of things, including, as already mentioned, to move fire from one place to another. It has also been ground into a powder and used to put in wounds to clot it and stop the bleeding. It has been combined with tobacco and smoke to relieve headaches. And finally, it has been added to foods like soups, not only as a flavoring, but as a natural preservative. Now, from a medical point of view, it has a number of properties which have been shown to be present through research. I'm going to use my notes to talk a few of those because it's quite extensive. So first off, it is known to be anti-tumor, antibacterial, antiviral, immunomodulating, antipathogenic, anti-diabetic, anti-inflammatory, and adaptogenic. You know, it sounds like one of those do-all kind of drugs, and it has all of those properties. Now, it's going to, how you use it will determine how valuable it is to you for any of those reasons. So it has been used or recommended and used as a daily tonic for inflammation throughout the body to treat things like arthritis, Crohn's disease. It has also been used to help regulate blood sugar. It has been used intermittently for fevers. There has been some use where it will reduce fevers with people. Chronic diarrhea, the periodic neuralgia, nervous headaches, excessive urination, and jaundice. So quite a list of things that it can be used for. So what I like using it for is just as a general tonic. As I mentioned in the opening of this video, I added to all the other mushrooms that I have in my slow cooker and reduce it very slowly through it to a decoction as a medicinal cocktail. So let's talk about how you go about using this mushroom and how you go about keeping it. So I mentioned a few minutes ago, when you find these mushrooms attached to the tree and you can see how it attaches, there is a bracket kind of a formation on the back of it. When you 
pull it down off of the tree. It should come off quite easily. You may just want to clean it up and take any dust or dirt off of it, any little branches or anything else. I have not found these to be bug eaten, which is very curious because the birch polypore, often if you don't get them very fresh, they'll find the bugs have burrowed into it. Now it could be because this is a bit, quite a bit tougher, quite a bit more woody. Still soft when it's fresh, but it don't leave it for very long because it'll dry out and become very very hard. So that's what you want to do. Get this home, slice it into thin pieces, lay it out to dry. You don't even have to use a dehydrator for this. These things will dry very quickly. You could alternatively put them in the freezer for later use. You could even after the dry grind them down into a powder if that's the way you want to keep them. So how, do you, how are you going to turn these into medicine? So there are two ways of doing these, or actually three I guess. First off would be to steep them in hot water like I do with my medicinal cocktail and uh, reduce the water, that's called a decoction. So you actually simmer it down and take some of the volume of the water away. Don't boil it because boiling can be damaging to some of the medical constituents within the mushroom. So that's one method. The other way is through a, an alcohol infusion. So what you would do in that case is create a tincture by placing this cut up in small pieces in a high concentration of alcohol, leaving it for a number of weeks where the alcohol will draw out other air, uh, types of medicines within the mushroom. You can then take the mushroom that you have left and again put that through a water bath and create an infusion that way and then combine the two of them together. That would be called a dual extraction. So there are a number of ways. Primarily I use this just by putting it in that medicinal cocktail as I already mentioned and drinking it down. So what does it taste like? Well, it's a bit bitter. Uh, to be honest, it's a bit bitter. It's nowhere near as bitter as the birch polypore, but not as pleasant tasting as chaga. It's not bad. It's something that's easy to tolerate. And if you find it a little bit more bitter than you like, a little bit of honey or maple syrup will make all the difference in its taste. All right, that's just about everything I want to tell you about the red belt of polypore. What I would do is suggest that the next time you're out in the woods where you're, there's a lot of coniferous trees and a lot of dead stumps, take a look around. You'd be surprised you're likely going to find one of these nearby. I would suggest taking one or two of them home, cutting them up, giving them a try. See if you like how they taste, maybe make some medicine out of it. However, I would also caution you not to pick every one that you do see for a couple of reasons. It's not that you're going to hurt the plant itself. The plant or the mushroom is actually growing inside of the tree. This is just the fruiting body. It's like the apple on the apple tree. Picking the apple is not going to hurt the tree. It's going to produce more of them. However, there is a cool association between these in the woods and the health of honeybees in any given area. So I always like to leave some behind to make sure that the insects that benefit from them will have access to them as well. Having said that, there are plenty of these around in the woods, so it's not hard to come up with a few of these that you could bring home and turn into medicine. Okay, that's all I have to share with you with the Red Belt of Polypore. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. And until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.